like to start with Mr. Oliver, if I may. You briefly mentioned problems with technological issues related to the equipment in your testimony. Would you like to go into a little more detail so we can understand some of those technological issues? Um, I am not certain exactly what you're referring to in my testimony uh, to tell you the uh, truth. Uh, but if, if you could, uh, the, uh, the equipment that you're using, uh, the transition, do you feel like the, the equipment's working well? Um, again, most of my testimony related more to the telephone side. Again, we do have video um, uh, proponents out there as well that we're serving. Uh, and, and, and yes, sir, we, uh, you know, I, I think that we are finding not major problems at this point. And, and at this point in time, we would, would see a relatively smooth transition from our standpoint as a cable service provider. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, Mr. Dempsey, thank you for being here. Uh, it's good to have you in Washington. Uh, you mentioned $6 million. It's cost your station so far. Uh, is that a pretty typical standard for some, most small stations? Oh, yes. Uh, again, uh, if I may refer to my testimony, whether you're in Johnson City or New York City, the costs are, uh, to make this transition are basically the same. So it's very burdensome. And, you know, we're the 91st market, so we're kind of midway in the country. You get into the markets that are 150 and on up, it's, it's even more difficult because they have less of a revenue stream. How do you hope to absorb that cost, that $6 million that you've had an outlay? How do you uh, plan on bringing that money back into your business? Well, one of the ways that we hope to is uh, the fact that we are able now to provide other streams of programming. For example, uh, WJHL-TV has a second channel. It's a 24-hour local weather. And we hope once we get access to all of the homes in the market via cable or satellite, we think that that service uh, will be uh, in need that it'll get ratings and we'll be able to sell the advertising on that. The and maybe a third channel and a fourth channel. The $6 million that you've paid to date, do you foresee still the ongoing increases in expense until you make the transition in February? Yes, sir. Do you have any idea how much that that it, cost. It'll probably be another uh, million and a half because when you make this transition, for example, when you go to the to the full digital uh, uh, signal, for example, you're you're going to have to have basically a new set because uh, to when we tell, when we broadcast in high definition, you basically have to reconfigure your set to fill that 16 by 9 ratio screen versus what we've had. So that's just one example. That'll, that alone will probably be one hundred fifty to $200,000. Uh, one thing I have noticed uh, when I'm back home, you are running PSAs, and you actually started those before federal m mandates kicked in to make you do those things. Yes, sir. Uh, can you tell me how that's working and, and the feedback you're getting on your PSAs? I think it's working very well. Uh, <clears throat> This is so important to, to us because we don't want to lose one set of eyes. We don't want to lose one household to this transition because they're all important to us. Uh, we've undertaken in the last few months this education program that I think is working. We notice from the calls we get uh, at our station, in addition to what we run that's, that's broadcast, we also have a, a basically a grassroots approach where, in my case, I go and speak to civic groups or say the first Tennessee Development Council on Aging, which was one of the best, by the way, I, I ever visited because it really did help those folks understand what they were going to have to do. So I, I think we have the public, they now know that a huge change is coming, and I think we've been very successful in doing that. Thank you. Mr. Hefner, in your testimony, you mentioned that many retailers were hesitant to participate in the coupon program. Uh, what concerns do they have uh, that are preventing them from participating? Well, from the feedback from the dealers around me, they, first of all, thought the coupon program was going to be very difficult. I mean, they looked it up on, on the website and they saw these four or five pages of, of um, you know, participation rules. Uh, I think they just felt overwhelmed by it and thought they are going to have to do more than they have to do. Um, uh, I understand that that was a lot more uh, erroneous uh, uh, prior to CIRCS getting involved, that there was a lot more regulations, but uh, got streamlined down uh, when we started. 
seem fairly, I mean, once you read it through, you realize it's really not as bad as it seems. Um, plus, they feel like it's going to be a hassle to have to redeem the coupons and deal with the customers. Uh, they would just rather say, go buy your box at Walmart, I guess. I don't know. Uh, for us, that wasn't a, an option. We positioned ourselves over the last 58 years to be the expert in our market area for TV. We're going to get those calls anyway. Uh, so we had to have a solution, period. So do you think those concerns have been valid? No, I don't at all. Okay. The Government Accountability Office recently released a report regarding the progress of the DTV transition. In this report, the GAO found that many small retailers had to make costly changes to their point-of-sale process to accommodate the government-issued coupons. Did you need to make any changes to your point-of-sale process? Uh, the only change we made was to add a, a link on our computer screen that said redeem coupon that took us to the NTIA's website. Very good. Uh, I started my question, this will be my last question, to Mr. Oliver, and I'm going to go back and ask that same question to everyone on the panel if, if anyone would like to answer, uh, talking about any problems, of technological issues related to the equipment. Have any of you seen that happening? If you could, if you could respond to the question. Leave that to Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to the point, which will hopefully in the next few weeks become moot. Um, for example, uh, with Mediacom, there are some 45 signal processing centers in small communities that service less than 100 customers off of that center. Um, to upgrade these centers with the necessary equipment would average approximately $15,000 per location. So in essence, what we were looking at was an investment on the order of $650,000 to service 4,500 customers. That means an investment of roughly $1,000 per customer. Um, there's very few businesses uh, that in, in this country that can survive when a resource demand is placed on them to put $1,000 down on your house. Um, and this is on top of an already uh, highly pressured rate structure. So we, stood, we looked at this, uh, and many small cable operators looked at this as being uh, a potential deal breaker in their business model and their inability to conduct businesses after that, uh, after the February 19th uh, transition date. The FCC, as I mentioned, recently uh, indicated that it was going to adopt an order that would provide a waiver of um, the dual carriage requirements that would require such a huge financial outlay for small cable operators. And that's why we think that uh, we applaud the FCC's actions. We hope that they will adopt the order in the next coming, uh, few coming weeks and prevent uh, small cable operators from having to go through such an excessive investment for very little return on, on, uh, on their investment. Anyone else like to answer that question? I, I would like to just say that we tested tested getting the coupons. Uh, we've purchased converter boxes. Uh, the last display uh, when I spoke to the group on aging was in the Millennium Center and I took a 10-inch monitor over there and rabbit ears and it picked up the signal just great. So I think they're going to be, uh, by and large, they work great. There'll be some areas, particularly in our region where it's mountainous, that there'll be some challenges. But thus far, the coupons, we've had various people say, you know, we ordered them up and they came right in. And uh, people, have, we've had basically all positive comments. 